Okay, I see that all of you have written down the question. Before we begin, I want you to take a really close look at this word right here, consecutive. What does the word consecutive mean? What does it mean to you? And give me an example if that's the way it's, it's easier for you to explain. Um, like one after the other. One after the other. Okay, so give me an example of uh, three consecutive numbers. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One after the other. One, two, three. Are those the only consecutive numbers that exist? No. 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 Infinite. Infinite consecutive numbers. Now give me an example, Chris Nell, of non-consecutive numbers. Uh, let's say seven, nine, ten. Seven, nine, and ten. They're not consecutive. Maybe these two are. But not seven. But not seven and nine, okay? Okay, let's look at one more word in this lesson. Sum. Hector, what does sum mean to you? It's the addition when you put them together. When you put them together. Fantastic. So it basically means addition when you put them together. Okay, so now let's read the sentence. Chris, can you read that sentence for me again? See if it makes a little more sense. The sum of three consecutive integers is 81. Find the three numbers. Okay, Annabella. Yeah. We're finding three numbers that are what? That are next to each other. Next to each other. And Daniela, whose sum is what? 81. 81. Okay, now attempt the problem. We have a clear understanding, I believe. Try to start off first by maybe circling things in the question to help you. Who are we talking about in this question? Okay, circle that name. Kyoko. Okay, two people. Pick a letter to represent. Exactly. Okay. Um, the K for Kyoko and the T for Tokyo. Okay. So you know, together, their t their ages equal to how much? Um, uh, the sum, the sum of their ages, the sum of Toshiko's and Kyoko's ages together equals seventy nine. Okay, so four plus seven is four. Well, Kyoko mm -hmm. and Toshiko equals seventy-nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Kyoko is four. Kyoko is well. We don't know that yet, but we know Kyoko is K because you told me Kyoko. Okay. So K. Okay. okay. Now tell me what Toshiba is. What does it say Toshiba is? Four. Four years old. More. More, yeah. More. Than? Um, Kyoko. Twice as old as Kyoko. Uh -huh. Do you know what Kyoko is? No. No. Plus, twice as old. So 2K. Okay, um, 2K. Plus? Four. Four. Right, four. Good job, Jospel. Okay, so that represents, who is that? Um, Toshibo. Good job. That's Toshibo. Okay, now combine like terms. Hector, continue to explain how you combine like terms, please. Okay, the variable right here. Tell me which ones have like terms. He's saying it's the one that has the same variables. Okay. Which ones have like terms? Um, the 2 right? The 2K, and what else? And, uh, um, and the case, my name Why'd you come up with three? Tell me why because it's three. I, I put on this over here, so I imaginary one, and I yeah, plus nice. two, yeah. is three. Good job. And, um, imaginary one. And then I put on um, 79. Um, I uh, just, so? just track four, give me 75, and um, then I. Um, <laughs> You divide by three. Divide by three. Give me twenty-five. And uh, 
and then you get the 79 and subtracting by 25, and you get the 54. How'd you get 54? Because um, out of getting 25, which is Kyoko's age, mm -hmm. then you subtract it from 79, which is the total age that we need to get, and we get 54. That's interesting, because I would have done it the other way. I would have done this plugged back in here. So you oh, came yeah, up with a very, yeah. I noticed, again, when I was walking around doing informal assessments, that some students, especially the ELL, needed assistance in the vocabulary words. At that point in time, I intervened. I, I sat next to them, and we showed how to break down the words. I used their peers to assist in explaining the words. Uh, we circled the words. We underlined. We read one question at a time. We made sure to break down that problem. And at that moment in time, I had to intervene because the student was capable of solving the math problem, but the vocabulary words were the problem at that time. Number one was sound pretty hard. I couldn't, I, I didn't understand it. My partner needed to, to help me on the, on the problem. Are you happy that you had the partner to help you, or would you have preferred the teacher to help you? Well, um, sometimes the teacher is helping somebody, so I could use uh, a partner to help me, but doesn't. Especially for an ELL student uh, that is having difficulty with vocabulary words, I want them to be able to use it in sentences, in, in ca uh, casual conversation, uh, perhaps making it a very uh, non-intimidating format where I could sit one-on-one -on -one with the student and make that connection and talk to them. Why, what is a variable? And ask them to give me examples that are maybe not written there in, in the question itself. And then bring it back to the question. But pretty much using the vocabulary is the only way they're going to learn it, by taking ownership. So I would make that connection of them identifying it on a paper, but also talking about it just in casual conversation.